brother David Hatchell. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Wendy. So like Netflix, we are doing a series that has seasons and episodes. So what we are doing is calling our series a Believer's Masterclass Series. And last time, what we focused on, our last season, I should say, we focused on Fear Not. Mm -hmm. This season, our focus is on Be Thankful. This came from a message that our pastor gave on fight the good fight of faith. And he had a variety of points that we talked about. But one of the points that he mentioned was you fight the fight of faith, the good fight of faith through praise and worship. So we took that one point and we really expanded it out around being thankful. Right. We kind of blew it up, really, and mm -hmm. said, like, this in is what we, way. in a good way. We blew it up in a good way. So today, what we want to focus on is being grateful in challenging times. So we're still in the midst of dealing with these unprecedented times with COVID-19 and dealing with the impacts of that, like the rise in virus infections and even deaths. Even the unemployment rate is continuing to increase and skyrocket, even higher than it was during the depression. And so what do we do in those times where we are up against so much? It makes us think on 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. And it says, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made that good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Yeah, now I know between the two of us, we've been through a lot of challenges over the years yes. from getting fired to being in relationships that just didn't work out, mm -hmm. to financial challenges. Yes. I've even had to file for bankruptcy. I mean, you know, we've had our hard times. So, right. um, But even when you think about some of the hard times you've been through, my question for you, Wendy, is have you ever been in a situation where you really didn't or couldn't receive a word from someone where they're trying to encourage you by giving you scripture? It's like, I'm just not feeling it right now. Most definitely. I've been in... It's most often when I'm in the midst of the challenge or the trial that I'm not necessarily poised to receive a word. And I'm just being completely honest. Yeah, it is sometimes yeah. I don't just cling to it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just wanted to bring that out to recognize because sometimes, you know, we may get to that point where it's like, you know what, I'm just not feeling it mm -hmm. right now. But it's important to understand if you do get into that position where you are feeling that way is really understanding that focusing on the facts is not helping. And when I say the facts, meaning your current situation, there's no power in that. Right. But you know what there is power in? There's power in rehearsing the truth. Wow. And the truth is meaning the word of God, rehearsing what the word says about you, your situation, and what God has in store for us. I think it's so important to really focus on where you're going. Because sometimes we get caught up, so caught up in the current situation that it's hard for us to see beyond where we are. Mm -hmm. One of the ways to praise God is start to look to your future. Look and believe and use your faith that he's going to work it out. Right. That's what you can praise God for is what he's going to do to get you through this challenging time. And take that key. That was a nugget that you just said. And, and as we coach individuals, what we focus on are things in the future, not yeah. things from the past. So we're coaching toward what, what do you have? What are you expecting? What are you hopeful for? And that generally gets people um, in expectation. So where, what, what does Deuteronomy say about this? So Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 says, This day I call the heavens and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your family may live. So this lets me know that we have a choice. Yep. It's up to us. We can continue to complain or we can continue to seek God and give him the glory and believing that oh, he's yeah. going to work it out. Mm -hmm. Just like I think about, you know, in Jericho, what, what Joshua had to do when God gave them instructions to march mm -hmm. around the wall for seven days in a row. Right. And on that seventh day, what did they do? They shouted. They shouted, which reminds me of, you remember back in the day, they used to have these commercials on, you know, if you got a stain and the kids are out playing and they get their clothes all dirty, what are you going to do? And they were like, shout it out. So remember this? Shout it out. 
So same idea of getting the stain out, getting the dirt out. We are going to shout out by right. giving God some glory. Shout it out by giving God some praise right. and knowing even according to Psalm 8, praise, God ordained praise to stop the Avenger in his tracks. Yes. Just like we do oh. our dog. We have this <laughs> as an example. It's our leash. So when our dog starts to run around or get too far away, what do we do? How do we do it? You stop him in his tracks. We so like, here's, here's a little coffee running off, running off. And then we just stop him right there. No more stop tension. In his tension in the, in the leash. Stop him in his tracks and even pull it back. Ooh. Get your stuff back. Yes, yes. Talk about full restoration. That's what praise can do for you. Yes. Don't be afraid or bashful um, about shouting and praising God. Give him a shout in your house today. Thank God. Say glory. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are magnificent, God. You are wonderful in all of your ways. And we thank you, God, right now for what you have. For we know the best is yet to come. Amen. So be encouraged. And that is our word for today. Be thankful.